Welcome back. Thanks for watching the rest of this cut. In this episode, I'm going to make a chalkboard. And we start off, we're at my friend's sawmill. This is Benson Sawmill in East Durham. This is a log I picked from the yard. It had a lot of knots in it, so I thought it would make some pretty live edge boards. So they custom cut this for me. I told them what I wanted to do. So I needed three boards at least 10 feet long. And this is a little bit longer than 10 feet. This is about 11 feet. And we're getting three clean boards that are two inches thick. And so he's flipping it around trying to find the good part. This is a wet board of hemlock, or should I say a wet log. It hasn't been dried that long. This tree might have been cut down within the last six months. And that's really nothing for a big log like this. So the wood was considerably wet. The advantage of using a bandsaw sawmill is that you can get a much wider plank from a bigger tree. When you use a circular saw blade sawmill, you're limited by the diameter of the blade. Here, your only limitation is the throat of the bandsaw, which you see right there. It looks like it's probably about three feet. The boards I'm using are only about 10 to 12 inches wide, so it's not a big deal in this case. I ended up with about four boards out of this whole tree, and we throw them on my friend's truck right there and we take them back to my place which is really just about a mile away there's Jocko and so here we are going back over to my place and I'm making a chalkboard it's gonna be just about 10 feet wide after all is said and done and here I'm using a circular saw and the wood is kinda of wet so it's grabbing a little bit you could also see how wet it is there when you cut through it and you could it's like cutting into a piece of wet bread right inside it's still wet so that whole entire log is got a considerably high moisture content. But this is going to be outside, so it's going to be getting wet anyway. So I cut two planks, and now here's my third plank. I'm going to split the difference of each measurement just to find the center. And now I'm going to cut the bevel. Uh, again, since I'm making a chalkboard, the bevel has to be cut from the flat side each time. So it, it ends up taking out a, a, a lot of material there. But I had just enough to do what I needed to do. So now that I cut that board in half, those are going to become the two short sides of the frame. And now I'm going to mark the angle that will make up the other end. And the chalkboards here I have are, uh, I think, are 56 by 48. And I want to overlap them. Yeah, the, the wood was grabbing right there. I'm going to overlap them by at least three inches. And so there you go. Jocko's helping me put the frame together. So I'll first look at the size and it's pretty big. You can see how big it is in relationship to the garage which is 24 by 24. I'm going to hold this frame together with these steel brackets that are going to go at each corner. I'm cutting these brackets. I'm going to embed them in a little bit but just to get the frame together so I can keep working on the the back of it I'm going to put these in temporarily and I drill a bunch of holes in each one and each screw holds about I don't know technically something like 80 pounds and if I put 10 screws in there, I can count on a lot of holding strength. And I just bevel off the burrs on one side, and then I countersink the top. Because I want these screws to go in. And so here you can see how the corner is going to be held together. And I'm putting them on temporarily. It's actually the end of the day, so I'm just going to get them together. So in the morning, I'm ready to go. So there's a bracket at each corner. And I'm also going to have some holding strength from the back once I put the chalkboards in place. I'm going to have some backing panels too. That'll help. And I say chalkboards because I was given two chalkboards to put into this frame. Two slate chalkboards, three-eighths of an inch thick. I'm marking my center of my long side, which is right where the two chalkboards are going to meet. And I'm marking my center on my short side so I know how to place the board top to bottom. And so I do my layout. I get my perimeter. And I'm using a chalk line to lay out the perimeter. And this is a, a great way to mark a straight line. And now I need to check the squareness of the frame and I'm using what's called the 3-4-5 right triangle method. If one side is 3, the other side is 4, the hypotenuse right there should be 5 feet and it is. And I'm just double checking with my diagonals, making sure they're the same number and they are. And now I know that the frame is square and I begin to cut the pieces of wood that are going to trap the boards. This is 3 eighths of an inch 2 by 4 slivers I'm making 
and this is going to make up the exterior edge of my holding area that's going to carry the chalkboards. I'm using type bond 3, I tack them in temporarily, and I'm just tacking them to hold them in place. Of course, the glue is going to do some of the work, and once I put the backer boards, there's going to be screws through everything. With this small trim stuff, I like to cut it with a handsaw. It makes it a lot easier than pulling out the electric. And so now here you see the chalkboards. These two chalkboards are given to me by the school. And they said they didn't mind having a seam as long as it was dead center. And so there's the chalkboards. I'm getting rid of that because I don't want it to be a pressure point on the backer board and potentially crack that slate. And this is so big and wide of an area in the back, I needed three pieces of plywood. It's 53 inches top to bottom. So I didn't have enough to just use two plies. I had to use three plies. Because it's wider than eight feet and taller than four feet. I left some room for movement, but here I'm just putting a little wedge in there to keep the boards in place. When I move this around, I don't want them to become disjointed. That center line down the middle is important to make sure they stay together. And uh, there I ran out of batteries, so I had to go get the electric. Screws are going in about three inches apart. I'm using all weather screws. And here this is my last odd piece, 53 by 20. It's just an odd piece, so I just had to bite the bullet and cut it out of a full sheet of plywood. This is green plywood. It's meant to be outside. This whole thing's going to be outside full time. So now I need to make my brackets to hang this up. At the location where it's going, there are two 4x4s installed in concrete. And they can carry a lot of weight. So I devised these brackets so that when I get it on the job site, I can hang it from the top of the poles. And while it's hanging from the top of the poles, we don't have to struggle. We can just make sure it looks good, kind of keep a safe hand on it, and then start putting the screws in. And uh, so this is going to be the long part of the bracket that goes against the side of the 4x4. Right there you see is the top of the bracket that's going to be the stopper. And at the bottom there you see I cut that notch out. So the 4x4 is going to go down past the bottom of the bracket and over that notch. I'm just welding everything together. And now I have inch and one half 3 8 lag bolts uh, into wood. I'm just putting them in with my impact driver and a half inch driver. And that's Bill. Bill helped me move this. This is probably one of the heaviest things I've ever put together. Consider that was one big giant log. Now it's a, a picture frame of wet wood. And those chalkboards themselves are about 100 pounds each. Now here I just palm sand off all the burrs and fibers. Get it kind of smooth. And now I go for my artistic idea where I'm embedding these clips into the corner. Now the whole thing is held together by the back of board. So I can take those clips off and not worry about anything. And I'm just using a quarter inch router bit on that little handheld router. I'm just cleaning up the sharp corners and I'm going to put that bracket back in place. And it's going to be below the surface which makes it look slightly more intentional to have on the face. I was a little nervous that these brackets in the corner were going to look like something that should be only visible on the back. I wanted to try to give them a little artistic feel. And I think it worked. I'm using raw metal and basically raw screws, but I cover it later up with permalac, which is a paint that makes it rust proof. Of course, everything like this is going to need maintenance but the Permalac works pretty good. And here we go. Rooster approves. <laughs> and now I'm driving from New York to Long Island where it gets installed. I had to go really slow because you see that 2x4 there? That's right at about halfway. That one that's near the tailgate. So the whole board felt like it was bouncing from the middle back which was hanging off the back of the truck. There you see the city skyline. And now here I am with six guys, including myself, and we pick it up. And we carry it up onto the front of the school. This is going to be in this area, this exterior area. 
this thing was so heavy. We were all very nervous to, to twist it and potentially crack one of the boards, but we, we, we were okay. And now my plan worked perfectly. The brackets are hung right on the top of those 4x4s. And here you see me driving and the lag bolts that are going to keep it in place. My measurement was right on, thankfully, because it took good notes. And there you can see how the brackets work. It's carrying the weight from the top. And there's the permalac I was talking about. I'm going to paint everything with permalac. Just to give everything one more coat to make sure that it's nice and coated. I painted it the, the day before. Put in place, I wanted to give it a couple more coats. And there I'm painting the, the brackets again. And there's the area I built that fence. I designed this area but the only things I built was this chalkboard and the fence but I did have a hand in designing the whole area it was a couple of talented people put together the rest of it and there's me of course putting my logo on the board and a, a funny impromptu class session popped up some kids came over and they were asked what I was doing and I started checking their math skills we had a we had a lot of laughs kids were good thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this and learned something